Hey guys, it's Deborah. Um, I haven't talked to you guys in a little bit. It's been probably about a week or so. Um, and I'm really sorry that I haven't been updating you on things. Um, it, it's not that long, I guess, but it feels weird because I've been uploading almost every day or every other day, maybe three days, kind of like at the most, going apart from videos. And there's just been so much. So maybe at the end, I'll just discuss some stuff personal stuff, but, um, I, I, I found some things as I was doing like personal Bible study and it seemed like so deep to me and big and I wanted to share it. And then it started becoming overwhelming. Like I couldn't figure out how to get it across. And then I started just losing train of thought on how like it all tied in and stuff. And so it was becoming, I guess, overwhelming to kind of put together as a video. So I was kind of just getting discouraged about it or I don't know if it was discouraged. I was getting like frustrated. Like I couldn't get it into the video and I thought it's just, this is going to be this huge project. And like, I do have my, my kids and everything. And so I'm like it, every time I went to go work on it, it's like, I would get defeated before I even started. Cause I'm like, ah, oh, how am I going to put this in words? So I am not prepared really at all. I'm just jumping into it. Cause this morning I was just kind of thinking, you know what, honestly, I'm just going to do it because I'm just going to start talking to you guys and like, you know, piece things together because otherwise I'm never going to do it at all. And honestly, it is not probably going to be exactly, well, I, I, you know, I prayed that it would be, but it might not be exactly as I thought it was when I was first reading it, like to put it together and like, pr pr like show it to you guys. But I think I'll just take pieces that seem like there's something and then just, just show it to you guys. And then if I, like I can go into deeper study on my own later. And then if there's more things, bring it out as like a part two or something. So, um, yeah, it's just, I was, okay. So here's what it is. I was reading in Joshua. And then as I was reading in Joshua, I feel like the Holy spirit was just on me and just, it was like, I was seeing so many parallels to what we're going through. And, um, I probably have forgotten a lot of them. I wasn't taking notes at the time. Um, I usually try to do things before my kids get up and it's just such a gamble if I'll have time or not. It's like, <clears throat> and if I make a move and someone hears me, they get up and then they, you know, want me. So then I can't do it. So I, yeah. So at that time I didn't have a pen and paper, but I'll, what I think is best if I just go through Joshua a couple chapters and like, I'll just scroll and read with you guys and tell you what I was seeing and then some other things at the end of the video. So yeah, let me grab the Bible. Okay. So I'm in Joshua three. Let me just scroll and read a bit. I don't want to read like everything for you guys. I'll take a long time, but we'll try to go together. So I'll read and what stands out to me, I'll explain what I saw. So it says, and Joshua rose early in the morning and they removed their shittim and came to Jordan and he, sorry, to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. So I should tell you what I'm reading here is about the you know, the Israelites about to take over the promised land. So if, as you would know, um, Moses died and Joshua is now leading the people to go into the promised land. This is kind of where we are right now, kind of in a holding season, waiting to go into our promised land, which is first, you know, um, to the father's house and then to come back with Jesus to reign on earth for a thousand years. So it's like the time of our promise. So that right there is a similarity, but then as I read more, I just saw more. So, um, and it said, and it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when ye, when ye see the Ark of the covenant of the Lord, your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it, they shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2000 cubits <clears throat> by measure come not near unto it that ye may know the way by which you must go. Um, okay, so I'm just going to say, for me, when I was hearing about the Ark of the Covenant, it felt like, I think, now I'm trying to remember how I interpreted it, but it felt like it was representing us with the Holy Spirit, and I'll explain why after. So um, let me just move down. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Um, and that was like what we're doing right now. We're sanctifying ourselves. We're preparing ourselves to go into the promised land. And Joshua spake unto the priest saying, take up the Ark of the Covenant, pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, this day I will begin to magnify thee. Okay, I'm just going to go down. Ah, sorry, I'm going to go back for a second. When it said, um, it said, um, 
Oh, verse 12. Now, therefore, take you 12 men out of every tribe of Israel. Um, it just, it kind of, there's just this, um, I feel like this parallel to, again, what's going to be happening. Remember, there's 144,000, you know, it's of every tribe of Israel. So that's not exactly, but I just see these like similarities. But as I go on, you'll see a little bit more. And it came to pass when the people removed their tents to pass over Jordan and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as they that bear the Ark were come into the Jordan and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water. So this is important for me. For the Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. So we're praying that this is the harvest of us, the harvest season um, of the church. And it says the Jordan overfloweth his banks at the time of the harvest. And... What is happening right now is the Sea of Galilee is overflowing. Um, I don't know if anybody follows the channel, revelationchapter12.com. I've mentioned this channel a lot of times. He does extensive research. I'm going to put a link in the description box to one of his latest videos. Or, you know what, I'm going to try to find. He has a video that explains in detail. I hope I can find it. I hope I can. Why he, uh, why he believes that the time that Jesus returns, the Sea of Galilee will be overflowing or flooded um, or to the brim. But I think it's even overflowing. Now, the Sea of Galilee, and this is this rough way of explaining it, is the shape of a harp. And it talks about the, re okay, the, the symbolism to the harp is kind of where he ties into his prophetic what he sees so that okay that didn't do a good job at all so I'm going to try to put a link in why he explains how the Sea of Galilee he believes will be overflowing at the time of the Lord's return and now it was never doing that before so he has like prior to I don't know 19 whatever 1900 and whatever it had not risen this way so then certain point I think it's the oh it's called the Oh, something was passed. Oh, I can't remember now. But basically, it started getting higher and higher when some declaration, Guilford Declaration. Oh, okay. Well, if I can put this link, that will really help you a lot. But the point is, it started rising. And then it started going up and down really drastically during the harvest season, like really high and then really low. This year is like the most craziest. It's the fastest it's risen ever at all. And like, then what just happened as I was reading this, it, they, it burst, like they had to open the dam. So for the first time, or I don't know if it was the first time, I thought he was saying it was the first time, they had to open the dam because it overflowed. So right now, the Sea of Galilee started overflowing. And look what it says here in Joshua, for the Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of the harvest. But it wasn't doing that prior to this declaration. But there's something in this that I will tell you that really was like, whoa, to me. So it said, and it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over the Jordan that the Lord spake unto Joshua saying, take you 12 men of the people out of every tribe, a man and command ye them saying, take you hence out of the midst, of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood from 12 stones and you should carry them over. So this is something I've talked about in previous videos. They, they make a, a memorial monument, but again, this is one from every tribe. It just reminded me of kind of like the 144,000. Um, according to all that Moses commanded Joshua and the people hasted and passed over. And it came to pass when all the people were clean, passed over the ark, the Lord passed over and the priests in the presence of the people and the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and half the tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the children of Israel as Moses spake unto them. About 40,000 prepared for war passed over before the Lord unto battle into the plains of Jericho. On that day, the Lord magnified um, Joshua. Okay. Um, let's see here. Sorry, guys. And the people came out of the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal. Okay, so this is where things started getting somewhere for me. In the east border of Jericho. So it felt like, and I don't know why, the Lord emphasized the word Gilgal to me. And... It felt like he's saying, we're in Gilgal. And I'm still trying to figure out everything about that. So I don't know anything about Gilgal. And as soon as I heard that word, I felt the Lord saying, you know, you need to look into this. This is something you need to look into. And so I will tell you what I found when I looked into it. And it was immediate. So none of the other things kind of jumped out at me. And it feels like we're here now in Gilgal. So like the people, everything they did up until that point, we've done. And now we're here in the east border, border of Jericho. And those 12 stones, which they took out of Jordan, did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. 
And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask your fathers in time to come, saying, What meant these stones? Then ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were passed over. Okay, so let's move on. And it came to pass when all the kings... Okay, I'm going to just go down a little bit. Um... Oh, yeah. So, uh, so basically, they're about to cross over. And then we'll go to verse 3. It says, And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskin, at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. Now, all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, unto whom the Lord swore that he would not shew them. So, you know, okay, I'll go to verse 7. And their children whom they raised up in their stead, them, Joshua circumcised them. For they were uncircumcised because they had not uh, circumcised them by the way. Um, so here's what I'm saying, what I saw here. So these people are all the young ones. And I had just done a video about generations. And I had said that, like, if you look at the generations that they talk about in the worldly versions, you know, generation Y, X, boomers, um, the greatest generation, they talk about generation Z and the newest ones, generation alpha. You can check out my video. It's like two videos before this one, I think. And it's um, about which generation shall see the rapture, I think it is. So I had felt like the Lord had showed me a lot of stuff in that. And um, from boomers to alpha. Um, and in that you have alpha means new beginnings and generation Z is the end. So that would be I had deducted and somebody had mentioned the greatest generation and I had meant to, I hope I replied to them. I don't know if I did because I've been really off with my, my replies and stuff, guys. So I'm really sorry, but I'm going to go through some of my um, comments and stuff. It's just, it's, yeah. Anyway, I'll talk about that at the end. So when it comes to the generations, um, I had seen that there was a, you know, something going on there with the man-made generations and the names that they had and stuff like that. Boomers were the, the ones that shall not pass away. And they were to tell the last generation, which would be X, Y, and Z. And Z is literally the last. It means the last letter and is the last generation. And then generation alpha are little ones right now. They're the ones who are going to be, you know, starting the millennial reign. So now I'm just saying in this, when they were passing over, trying to get into the promised land, all only the young ones went in. So it was very similar to what I was seeing and they had to be circumcised, meaning there's a big part here. The Lord was showing me how in Gilgal we are circumcising the flesh right now. We are, you know, ridding ourselves of this world, fleshly things, and no one's going in who was living in sin and going in. I don't not talking about salvation. I'm talking about the rapture. So I see some sort of like connection that the Lord is showing me that this is like a sanctification time period and that the reason why the younger generation was going in here was because the older generation disobeyed and they weren't even circumcised. Oops, it just shows how um, young they were. And I was saying like generation alpha will be actually born, some of them in the tribulation, only meaning that some people will actually procreate during the tribulation. And though when we come back in the millennial reign, they'll be little ones and they'll be there. And when we come back, they'll be there. You know, some of their parents will have to go because some of their parents will have received the mark. So, and then also all the children will be raptured. So they will, I don't know if they're going to age in heaven or if they're going to just age slowly and just get to a certain age. Um, but they're going to be raptured and then they're going to come because people have seen children in heaven when they have visions and stuff, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but they've seen children. So maybe you age till a certain point and then you stop. Anyway, they are those generation Z and they, uh, so what I was saying was when it says, go tell the last generation, there's a verse that says, go tell the last generation as in like, well, that's so deep. So I won't get into all of it, but I put it in my other video, but basically, you know, the generation that shall not pass away, the fig tree generation that Jesus talks about in Matthew 24, they are to tell the last generation. So the ones that shall not pass are the ones who are going to be like they were born after 1948. So basically those generation, they won't die, but they're to tell the last generation because the last generation X, Y, Z millennials or whatever are the ones who are going to actually, you know, be the younger 
like the they're going to be like of a capable age. So the boomer generation and the greatest generation, they're to tell the last generation, these last generation, because we can really go tell everyone and spread it around the world just before the rapture. And then when the rapture comes, Generation Z is kind of the ones that fill the promised land. So it's like the ones being circumcised here are like they are like Generation Z. Um, and I'm just saying, I know that sounds, see this, why it was hard for me to do. It sounds kind of like a lot and there's a lot of, you know, reaching and stuff like that. But I don't know, just as I was reading, I just saw all these kind of, um, links and similarities and I wanted to share it with you guys. But when I get to Gilgal, you'll see why I think the Lord was talking to me that day. Um, so anyway, so right now what these people are doing is they are getting ready to get, to be prepared to go in the promised land. Remember, these are the ones who did not still and sin in the wilderness. They were not allowed in the promised land. They weren't allowed. If they sinned, they weren't allowed. Am I saying you can never sin or something like that? Of course not. What I'm saying is like, it's just a lifestyle. Like they were living a lifestyle of disobedience, the older generation. And they didn't love the Lord. Like they, their hearts weren't for him. So he, he had to start with the new ones. Um, anyway, so comparing it to us, we, you know, are in this time period where he's giving us that chance to circumcise ourselves and become you know, make a covenant with him. And I'm not talking about Old Testament stuff. I'm just saying like, you know, it's symbolic of our hearts with him. So that's what I was being shown. So then if you go to um, verse nine, and the Lord said unto Joshua, this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off of you. So they're putting aside the world. Remember, Egypt is the world. So that's what we're doing right now. Wherefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. There, it says it again. So when, I should probably get into that soon. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at even the plains of Jericho. So that's what we did. We just had Passover and second Passover at Gilgal and Gilgal. Like, he, this is where he's going to put away his reproach. So I, I don't know, I could be wrong, but this is why I felt like he was showing me that this is the time period where he's taking away his reproach of the world. And yes, um, only Jesus' blood removes sin. Like that's not, it. That like I just, guys, I have to say, like from my study, you know, being rapture ready and going to heaven is just different. I, it's just for my study. Of course, they could be wrong. Of course, whatever. Like everybody goes poof, whatever. Fine. Then, then actually, that's great. Okay, that's totally great. Just from my study, nobody's taught me this. I'm not in somebody's camp. I don't like take sides or whatever. Um, I mean, I side with people who say right things, but I don't like say I'm in this or something. So like, all I know is from my study. You know, I believe that there is that that it's a gift, the rapture. It's just different than just salvation. It's not the same. Um, and that salvation is, you know, clearly just faith. And um, there's 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 more to that whole thing. But the point is, um, when it comes to being in Gilgal, he said he's going to take the reproach of Egypt. He's going to like, he, that day that they did that, he rolled away the approach. So now you can enter the promised land. I, you can do it. You can come in and take over Jericho. Okay, so verse 11. And they did eat of the old corn of the land and the morrow after the Passover. So this is right after the Passover. Unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. And the manna ceased on the morrow. Okay, so we'll move. Um, so basically now they've celebrated Passover in Gilgal. Um, and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went up to him, said unto him, art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, so he's an angel, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? And now I was seeing here, it was almost like I was feeling like when it talks about the virgins, it's like, this is the cry, the bridegroom's cry. This is like the thing right before the actual trumpet call of us to go up. This angel came and it was just like, I felt like there was something about the, like this warning before we actually hear the full trumpet. There's like this, this bridegroom's cry. And, and this is the angel to him saying, you know, you're about to go in. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, loose thy shoe from off thy foot from the place where thou stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Okay, now Jericho was straight shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. The Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into you, into thine hand, Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor, and they shall com compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once, thus shall thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark, seven trumpets, rams, horns, seven day, ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. Now, I saw here, it feels like this is like just before the start of the tribulation. So as I'm reading, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so much the same. What is there? 
there's seven trumpets from ram horns, seven days they compass it, and seven times the priest shall blow. What is there? There's seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls. So it's almost like this to me showed that it was about to start the tribulation, okay? And then it said, it shall come to pass that when ye make a long blast with the ram's horn, when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down. Okay, so here. What is it saying? There's going to be a long trumpet blast, and then it says it. the people will shout with a great shout. What are we going to be called up with? It says the trump of God and um, with a shout and the trump of God. So, like, we're going to hear a trumpet and a shout. Like, I don't know. Sometimes they say God's voice sounds like a trumpet. Um, I wish I had that verse on me. Let me look it up. Well, you guys know. It says with a shout and with the trump of God. You know, we will be caught up. Okay. So I don't have the verse on me, but it says it's the same. So he's saying, he didn't just say, you're going to have a trumpet. You're going to shout and have a trumpet. Remember first it was, what did it say here? There's three sevens, um, you know, seven trumpets, seven days you'll compass and seven priests will blow. So obviously it's not exactly the same, but seven, you know, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls, and then everything will fall down. The city will crumble. Okay. And then what's going to happen is when that happens, the people will get into the promised land. Okay. So, um, yeah, it said, um, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Okay. So look at this right here. Okay. Look at this. So when these three sevens happen, then all of a sudden something will fall destruction. What do we always hear when we read uh, and when we hear people's, you know, many times rapture dreams and things like that, things come down, crash, like the city is just destroyed, you know, things are destroyed, bombs, nukes, meteors, whatever. And then what happens? It says, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Okay. So this is different. Clearly they're ascending to go now fight and take a city, but how do we not see this similarity? Oh my gosh. With a trump of God and the shout, and first an angel came, that to me was the bridegroom's call with the ten and five, the five and wise and foolish virgins, that he came first. First the bridegroom came, okay? And he, sorry, there was the bridegroom's call. Um, and I don't have that on me right now too, but you know, he called out and then everybody woke up. And then when they woke up, then they trimmed their lamps. The five got their oil and the lamps and the five just had the lamps. And then they went out to meet him. And then it said it, he, he was a long way off. If you read in the parable of the virgins, the foolish and wise virgins, he was a long way off. So it wasn't immediately. Then once you heard the call, then you go and then whatever. <clears throat> but here it says, you know, the city will fall and then the people will ascend. Okay. So I'm going to just go a little bit further down. So they, they did what he said. They compassed the city. And then this is verse eight. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken to the people, seven priests bearing seven trumpets, ram's horns, they passed before the Lord and blew the trumpets and the Ark of the Covenant and the Lord followed them. And the, see, wherever they went, the Ark went. And I can't remember exactly how I had realized this, but I felt like that was the Holy Spirit, like for us, that, that where, if we have the Ark of the Covenant, which is the Holy Spirit, then we can go through, we can go to the next place. Like we can go to the next level. I mean, you know, we can move on. And then to the promised land and the army and the armed men went before the priests and they blew with the trumpets. Um, and the reward came after the ark, the priest going on the blowing of the trumpets and Joshua had commanded the people saying, so to me, all of this is going to prove like a pre-tribulation rapture that I have already felt like the Lord has showed me all the seals open at once. Boom, 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 boom. I know other people say they're like not at once. Like, I, like I just feel like that they open at once. Some people believe the trumpets, the seals and the bulls kind of, um, no, actually, I don't think, I don't know if they'd said open at once. All I know is all I've been shown, I haven't been shown everything. I just know with the, the, the seals, I feel like the Lord has shown me they open at once and it's not that it all happens at once. So, you know, it progressively happens like a quarter of the earth. I don't know that they die all at once or whatever. So, or is it a third? Okay. I can't remember now, but the point is from what I feel like the Lord, I, I go so much with the Holy Spirit, but then I'm researching constantly. Like I'm not, but if you can't just use one, you can, that's the problem. You can't just say, I'm just going to read and figure it out. And you can't just say, I'm just going to just ask the Lord and just poof. And it's just going to come to my head and I'm never going to read anything. So I do both. And this is how I saw it, that he said it opens at once and that that's when the white rider comes out and it all starts up or whatever. So this would coincide with this. Okay. So, and Joshua command the people saying, ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed of your mouth until the day I bid you shout, then ye shall shout. 
Um, so yeah, we're not going to hear anything until that really day comes. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city going about at once. And they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning and the priest took up the ark of the Lord and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew the trumpets and the armed men went before them. But the reward came after the ark of the covenant, the priests going on and blowing of the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city. So we're going to keep going. Um, Okay, and it came to pass the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. So remember, we had to hear the trumpets and then the shout. And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein. To the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are with with her ha with her in the house because she hid the messengers that we sent. Now, something about this um, said to me that in the tribulation, you know, the two that go get, there's the two um, spies and it represents somehow to me the two witnesses. They pull out Rahab. So like, just like the two witnesses go into the tribulation. So once the wall is down and the shout comes, the people ascend. So the way I saw the parallel was um, the, the trumpets and all that stuff blow. We hear the shout. Um, so like the, sorry, we hear the shout. And the, yeah, the people ascend and it's all simultaneously, the trumpets and the seals and all these things break. We go up, the city's destroyed or the earth or whatever has destruction happening. And then the tribulation begins. And then in it, when they run in, when the people run in, they rescue Rahab. It was like the two spies represented the two witnesses who rescue. Now, I don't know who Rahab would um, represent, but when it said Rahab the harlot, I felt like it was like Jewish people in the tribulation or tribulation saints who now believe. So it was almost symbolic. Like she got out, but she had to go through, she was in the tribulation. She was in the city. So like, like the ascending people would just go out, just be raised up. Now, clearly it's not the same, but I'm saying like, I saw it as when we ascend the church, then that's when the war really starts. Right. Okay. Okay. And so then I saw some similarity between the two witnesses and the two spies and Rahab, the harlot, she was the one who, you know, wasn't living for God, but then she gets rescued in the middle of the disaster. Do you see what I'm saying, guys? Like there's that there. And verse 18, and ye in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourself accursed when you take of the accursed. So now they're in it. They're in it. Okay. So, <laughs> Uh, so the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout and the wall fell down flat. So the people went up into the city, every man straight. Okay, so now tribulation has begun. So raptures happened, tribulation begun. And they utterly destroyed all this that was in the city, both men, women, young, old, ox and sheep ass with the edge of the sword but joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country go see it was the two men again so the two went to the harlot's house and bring hence the woman that she okay so they took her out so the two witnesses it's so now the tribulation is going on and and you know many people believe the two witnesses have uh, are having their ministry within the first three and a half years i know some people think the tribulation is only three and a half years i know some people think we're already halfway in it i know many many different things i'm just going to give this seven year scenario from my study and this kind of thing so they are, you know, in the beginning, even if you say it's only halfway or three and a half years or whatever, the, the, the two witnesses are in the beginning and they take out the harlot. Okay. So that is true. So it's, this similarity is just crazy. So, um, so they brought her out and her kindred and there we go. And they burnt the city with fire. And what does it say? How will the, how will the world end? Okay. How is God going to judge it in the end? He's not going to judge it with water, with fire. And they burnt the city with fire and all those are there and the silver, the gold. Oh, and it even says that. Oh, there's a verse that talks about your gold won't be safe. Okay, so see? So now we're in the tribulation. And Joshua saved Rahab. Okay, let's keep going down. Oh, yeah. So here we are at verse 13. Now Joshua is old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. This is the land that ye remaineth, all the borders of the Philistines and the Geshuri from Sihor, which is before Egypt, even unto the borders of Ekron Northwood, which is counted to the, okay, I'm going to move down. Verse four, from the south of the land, the Canaanites, I'm going to move down. The land of the Gib Giblites, okay, and the inhabitants of the hill country of Lebanon. These are all the places. So what he's saying is, um, verse seven, now therefore divide this land for an inheritance unto the nine tribes of the half tribe of Manasseh, with whom the Reubenites and the Gadites, Gadites, have received their inheritance, which Moses gave them. 
Okay, so I think where I'm ending is there. Okay, so basically after they defeated everybody and Joshua was old, they started dividing the land. So back in 13, they started dividing the land, okay? And then that reminded me, I'm pretty sure, I can't go into it any deeper, but of the tribulation ending and the allotting of different places to the um to us basically kings and priests so basically the the tribulation had ended then he was going to allot he was going to like divide out the land to like everybody and um yeah so he was basically going to divide out the land and give them their portion so it just showed me like the millennial reign where then after the war is all over and it was fought obviously it's not exactly the same then we are going to be given a place to reign and rule so like you know when so we're each going to be given our our section of the earth so that kind of wrapped that up for me um let me let me close the bible so sorry that was a bit messy and <laughs> all over the place but that was the only way i was going to get this done and some people i'm sure will enjoy it so back to gilgal now i was reading joshua for no apparent reason because when i i didn't have like a commitment like a study that i was like oh i have to read joshua it just i just felt like the lord was leading me to read joshua so as i was reading it the parallels were amazing just um you know you know obviously all the things that i just said about them passing over and where they what they had to do before they went and who got to go and what and the the 777 with just like the seals trumpets and bowls then there was the wall falling down the destruction of the city all burned with fire the two witnesses taking out the um you know the harlot but who had changed her mind in the tribulation and they came to like, it's not the two witnesses take them out, but they, you know, show the truth to people in the tribulation. And then um, just the dividing of the land once all the war was done and that they, they portion it off and we're going to be priests and kings in the millennial and all the different things. But let's go back to Gilgal because it's like, what was up with Gilgal? Because the minute I hit that word, which meant absolutely nothing to me, it was just like the Lord said, you need to look into this. So I'm like, okay. Um, then I, and I was thinking, you know what, Lord, like, is this really you? Like, I need to look into Gilgal. Like, you know, it's one of those moments where you're like, this just must be my brain. But no, it was him. So... I looked up the word Gilgal and I came to a bunch of things. Well, one thing, there was a whole study on the word Gilgal and the Hebrew letters with, and that they're made up of and stuff like that. And apparently it means um, the wheel. And in long story short, the whole article was saying it's about sanctifying yourself from sin. What did I just say? Like he, they said that they did in Gilgal. They did the circumcision. They sanctified them. They were like the... Like, I don't know. It was just to show that the reproach of Egypt was off them. The world was off them. So if that's where we are right now, we are in the place where we're, you know, getting clean, I guess you could call it. Like trying to clean off all the stuff that we have still from the world um, to be accounted worthy to the rapture. So, I mean, I could be wrong. This is just what I'm being shown. So anyway, the, the word Gilgal in the Hebrew letters, it means whatever, apparently like the wheel or a wheel or something like that. But in total, like the study had said that it means to cleanse yourself from sin. I'm not going to go into all that or show you all that because that was a whole nother thing. But I thought that was interesting. So I was like, oh, that's just what I was reading. But then it gave me a verse, not the study. Like just if you Google Gilgal or whatever, it brought me to, it, it brought me to, um, second Kings. Okay. Which is crazy because where the Lord is showing me to read, like, so this week that I've been off, all I've been doing is reading in Kings. And it's not because of this. It's just he's shown me to read in Kings. And I've, there's so much from that that I'm reading in, in the book of Kings. And you're just like, okay, what does that have to do with now? We're in the end times. And what is this? But he's been like revealing things, but I won't get into that now. But the point is he brought me to, it brought me to Second Kings uh, chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. This is what it told me to look up. Second Chap Kings chapter two, verse one and two. And all I could see there was one of the verses was two, two, two. Second Kings chapter two, verse two. And I was like, two, two, two. Because as you know, so many people in my rapture code countdown thing, five, 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 four, 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 three, three, two, 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 one, one makes a sentence and two, two, two is the rapture. And I have gone into it over and over why two, two, two is the rapture. 
um, in what the Lord showed me, and it means many things. Um, I know you have brother Steve Fletcher. His channel is Fl Steve Fletcher, like, 222 or something like that. So all I know is <laughs> he had shown me this so many times. I'm like, so when I read Gilgal in Joshua, and he's showing me how this represents the rapture and the tribulation and the millennial reign, all of a sudden he, I'm being shown to look up Gilgal, and he brings me to Ch 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 2. 222. Two, two. So I'm like, what could this be? So I'm like, when I get to 2 Kings, what am I going to find? Okay, what am I going to find? So it said read verse 1 and 2. That's what I had saw. So let's read 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. And it came to pass, the guys, <laughs> this is crazy. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went to Elisha from Gilgal. <laughs> And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. See, they were talking about Bethel too in Joshua. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went to Bethel. So this is what the Lord wanted me to read. Okay, so this, he brought me to, I'm <laughs> saying look up Gilgal. He brought me to 2 Kings 2, 1 and 2. Talking about Elijah being raptured. How? Just how? Okay. <laughs> when I got to, I'm like, so 222, 2 2, 2 Kings 222 2 2 is about the rapture of Elijah? How? How could that be? How could I be sitting there? And the Lord says, look up Gilgal. Gilgal's important. And he brings me to another rapture. And 222, 2 2, he showed me was the rapture. Look, guys, I know this sounds off the wall but there's no way there is no way so he is trying to bring our attention so then i had to read all of second kings and hear what happened and it this whole second kings 2 chapter 2 is all about them knowing that elijah was about to go they foreknew they knew so i urge you to read second kings chapter 2 they knew even the people around said did you know your master's going to leave this day he's like yes i know and it's about when it, here's what, interesting what it says in when Elijah got taken up, he said, if you see me when I go, ask or you'll get some of my, you'll get my anointing or double of my anointing. If you see me when I go. And I found this very interesting because I've always wondered who's going to see the rapture. Um, and I just heard, so I can't remember where I just heard. I just heard somebody talking about them saying that, um, that those who are waiting for Christ and don't go in the rapture or not waiting for Christ, those who like think they're going to go, but don't go like professing Christians or whatever, they will see people go. I, I don't remember what they said, but the point is, I found it interesting because he said, if if you see me when I go, then you will get a double portion of my, of my spirit. What if those who see the rapture but don't go in it, like not the world, because they're not looking for it. What if the tribulation saints see it no, they missed it and get a double portion somehow of like the Holy Spirit or something like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, guys, but I know he led me to this. Okay. There's no way. Sorry. I'm just getting like, I honestly, I've been having a hard time, but for a moment here, I'm getting excited. <laughs> you know, my personal home life, you know, praise God. He's been so faithful in, in so many ways and everything is just, all of us are like, what in the world is going on? But regardless, let's just get back to this positive thing um so yeah if you read second kings chapter two it's all about elijah going them knowing he's gonna go and like i said if if you see him go if elisha saw him go then he would get something more so he would get a portion of his um anointing so i don't know if that is that that those who see those who leave in the rapture like the tribulation saints will get like an extra anointing maybe they will because to make it through that right all I know is from start to finish, I'm reading Joshua. He's telling me this is like portraying that you're in Gilgal. I want you to, you know, the reproach of Egypt, the world to be off of you. I don't want any of it on there. I want, it's going to be the younger generation. I don't mean young as in if you're older, you're not, you know, whatever. I just mean like, clearly those born in 1948 are very elderly at this point. They're probably not the ones mostly listening to these videos. Um, So what I'm saying is like, he's, he's just showing like, you know, this is the generation that's going to come into the promised land and the ones born in the tribulation and things like that. So there's that. And then also, like I said, in Gilgal, um, you know, this is a place to like the circumcision. So it's like make this covenant with him that you're for him. You're no longer with Egypt. You're you're with God and that those are the ones who are going to go into the promised land. Then when the 777 happens, 
you know, it's the trumpets, the whatever, and then you hear the shout. That's when they, the people all ascend, then the city crumbles, burns with fire, and then that whole war happens, and then tribulation and everything happens, like, just like Joshua in the time period, and then also, um, I, I had said the Ark of the Covenant, there was that with the Holy Spirit, and, um, what else was there? The Rahab, Rahab and the two witnesses, the two spies representing the two witnesses, receive, taking out, um, you know, or basically helping those, the, the harlot who was in the city, and that representing those who are left in the tribulation, and the two witnesses help them by preaching the gospel and whatever. So there's these parallels. All I know is I had no intention whatsoever to find these parallels, think these parallels, or whatever. And then when it all ends, they divide the land and people get to rule over different parts, okay, of the promised land. So that's just like the millennial reign. And then all into the whole thing wrapped up is crazy because Gilgal was the main focus that he wanted me to focus on. And it brings me right to Elijah's rapture. And then he starts showing me that those who see when he see, if you see me, he says, and I don't have that verse. I'm looking for it. But it basically says, it, Elijah says, if you see me. When I go up, then you'll get a double portion. So there is that. So that's something that we can all try to study on. But it's interesting that it talks about Bethel as well as Gilgal. I'll have to look into Bethel as well. So, um, yeah, he really led me to that. But, yeah, he led me to two kings, two, one and two. And, like I said, two, two, two. And it's about a rapture. How is two kings, two, two about a different rapture? Two, two, two again. Like, <laughs> there's no way. So all I know is he is speaking. He's showing me these things. He's asking me to study, to show myself approved, and to share with you guys. So it's more like encouragement, and it's showing, like, this seems like this is what we're in, that we're in Gilgal, which is right outside Jericho, which is right outside the Promised Land. We're literally on the doorstep. You know, we're just waiting for that 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 shout, the, the long shofar blast. That's what we're waiting for. And then you know, the walls will fall and we ascend. And at the same time, this is the same time that, you know, it's the, the seven, seven, seven. It's not exactly the same, but it's, it's representing all these things are going to happen at the same time. So whether they go off right before or how it works, I mean, I don't exactly, you know, know, but well, no, I, I guess I do know. So we won't get into all that, but let's just say that is a representation of now. So I think it's encouragement in that way. Um, when it comes to, oh, and also the other thing that was huge was it said during the time of the harvest, the waters always, you know, um, of the of the sea, the, the Jordan, that they always overflow. And we know right now, like I said, the Sea of Galilee is overflowing and you have that Revelation tw chapter 12.com uh, channel just talking all about how there's a significance of he believes that's when Jesus returns and they just open the dam. Um, I think it's the Gadania dam and then they the doors just open letting the floodwaters out so i mean it's just everything is just like on the cusp in the door and at the door and so um i guess you know this is something that you could study in for yourself if you have any ideas or thoughts or comments sorry this was long um, i know i said at the end i will talk about some other stuff you know i'm gonna make another video because <sighs> there's like a few other things that i that in the media and what's happening right now um like today is kind of an important day. So you know what? I'm going to make, I have to make it today. I'm going to have to make a short one today because today is actually an important day and I'll explain why after. And uh, just with my own personal self, just please keep me in prayer because everybody knows, you know, in this time being home with small children or whatever, like, I mean, really, this is just kind of like a shocking experience for the whole entire world. People are in shock and we're just waiting to hear that trumpet the shofar blast or is it going to open up and then things are going to change go like smooth out and then there's going to be more waiting like I mean well this is where I want to talk about in the other video so like I said I I just haven't had the ability like I just there's been this just this blockage for me to be able to like share and talk with you guys and every time I try to as well like I feel this guilt with my family that I'm not you know, helping them. And it takes so long to kind of put stuff together. And, but I just knew this was the day and I knew the Lord wants me to share this. And I know, you know, um, you know, any man that puts father, mother, son, daughter, house, land, anything before the Lord is not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. And so I know that his will is first, like what you want, what you're supposed to do for him is first. So that's why I knew no matter what I have to get this out. So I, I hope it blessed you. I know it was a little bit all over the place.
but if anything, I hope it encouraged you to know that he is speaking to us and that he's trying to show us the time we're in. And I do believe we're in Gilgal because that's why he pointed it out so clearly to me. So all I can say is best to really seek him and take off anything of the world, like of Egypt to, um, you know, take off that reproach. So I'm thinking that's what he's saying. I really do think that is what he's saying. Um, and for other reasons. And so, yeah, there, well, there's definitely another reason. So yeah, I'm going to do another video. I'm going to explain the other reasons why I think he's saying that and then talk a little bit more about today and why today is kind of something. So, um, today is May the 16th. So yesterday was Israel's birthday, which is pretty huge. And then today, or sorry, it's today the 15th. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what today is. Okay, actually, I had to go check that. So, yeah, sorry, today's the 15th because I'm like, wait, Israel birthday is the 14th. So, yesterday was the 14th, and today, and that was like significant. And then today is a day. So, I'll just, yeah, I'll get back to you today with something short. Um, and this time, maybe I'll try to make notes. So, anyway, I hope you guys got something out of that. And it was nice to talk to you guys again. I don't want to leave anybody hanging. I don't think it's really, I mean, I. I've done it before and I don't want to feel like that connect goes away because where like this online community is a community and it does feel like, you know, a family and you guys are family and you guys are, you know, my online like church community believers, whatever. So like, I, I don't feel it's right to just like disappear into no man's land. And I, I don't, I won't do that. Like this wasn't very long, but for me, it felt like really long. Um, and I just feel like a responsibility to do that. And if I ever, you know, am I, and if I'm MIA, that's why I can't talk, then I would find a way to, you know, reach out. Or if you could find a way to reach out to me through Facebook or something like that. So anyway, that was that. And I really think that we're that close. So I will get back to you guys. Hopefully, no, I will get back to you today. Today I will, cause I have to, that, uh, to explain what the other things that I was talking about. So sorry for the rambling and I hope you guys do have a blessed day. I hope you guys stay encouraged and stay uplifted in the Lord and focus on what is good, what is pure and what is lovely. Please, please keep your mind set on that. Trust me in these times you need to. So I will talk to you guys again soon and until next time, God bless and shalom.